Hello, everybody. This is a Captain Sweep of the Very Secret Plan, and I'm going to start to institute a weekly report that I'll do on Sundays. And the report is a sort of a recount of the last week and looking at all of the players in the Very Secret Plan and looking at progress that is made. So for the people that are in the plan to understand how things are going in other aspects, and then for them to get a little feedback from me in terms of my assessment in terms of what is happening, both positive and negative. And for the audience, this is the way for you to start to follow the plan and at some point perhaps jump in and participate. The goal of the plan is to shift the world's economic system from fear to love and to basically create uh, a global organization of 144,000 planetary guardians that are participating in this plan and uh, acting like a media force to get the rest of our species involved. And so we've got a very big plan. And uh, I'd like to start with the sort of highlight of the week and uh, a player that has recently gone from inactive to active is Mr. Ramayan. And I must say that uh, in terms of the plan, I said this to him recently that uh, by himself, he sort of does more than everyone else combined. And that's the degree of his uh, buy-in into the plan, his participation over the years, how much sort of training he's got, but also his own particular genius in terms of being able to uh, handle a very high capacity. He's a, a brilliant musician, he's a brilliant speaker, he's a brilliant writer, he's a, a, a brilliant entrepreneur. I don't know about brilliant on that one, my friend, but uh, he certainly has the aspects of it. I mean, we all have our weaknesses, right? <laughs> anyway, I don't want to put too much of a, of a jab into Mr. Ramayan because this week he hit one out of the park. Uh, he set up within this online festival uh, that had like nine stages. And one of the stages was the synergy stage of all things. And he invited a powerhouse team of people to come together to look at the beginning of an, a new earth manifesto and an online wiki that is a new paradigm knowledge container to basically be the uh, place to take the plan into the uh, the next few years and he brought together an all-star cast uh, i won't name the names here for now but each person there was like a major international player and he set me up beautifully with the inflow matrix to be the uh, well one of the structures to be used within this uh this online repository and i sort of said to him we're going to do it in two ways there's going to be the inflow matrix portal and then there's the anything or everything else portal because uh, I've designed something and I'm sick of being dismissed, thrown out or whatever, not used. I mean, I, the inflow matrix is the inflow matrix and it is going to be used in this way where I am the chief architect and uh, Mr. Ramayan understands this and we're gonna have sort of like multiple ways of doing it uh, because there's so many different uh, processes, methodologies that could be used. I just want the one, I, I just <laughs> have to, have the ability to put this design that I've been working on for 25 years uh, together. And so that's huge. And it went for two hours and it, uh, there was a, a great response and uh, everyone is very hyped about continuing. There's another call today for two hours and we're gonna start to flush out what to do. And, and there was a map that was the stimulation map. I have a, a model of 12 fields, actually 13 fields with a field in the middle. And I used a pendulum to figure out where each of the players fit within this model. And it, it's, it's just magnificent to start to see how to bring these uh, maps together with people to identify different perspectives, to answer certain questions in a, in a sort of revolutionized or evolutionized methodology. I, our species is going to transform in terms of the type of communication that is happening. And this is part of it. So that said, I mean, what was that? Already into the report. The next person I'm going to go to is Mr. Zamir, his brother. Uh, I've always called these brothers the dynamic duo. Uh, they are uh, very talented artists. 
and uh, mm -hmm. scholars and uh, I, I just can't say enough about them in goodness, even though they do go in the doghouse at some points. And then I'm not so particularly nice, but we always manage to come back out and I love them dearly. And Mr. Zamir has a mystic yogi business he's setting up and he has a, a new card set that is uh, going to come into the market. And so I'm assisting him and Paula to uh, come up with marketing campaigns and to set up his business. And this is one of the business, first businesses within the shared knowledge community to do so, even though I know Zamir doesn't quite realize this. Uh, he has been on the fence about the whole idea of creating the shared knowledge community. And, uh, but I think he's gonna find that it is necessary in order for an artist to actually go forward with your work because we don't wanna do the marketing, we don't wanna do the accounting, we don't wanna do any of this stuff that administrators can do. The artist just wants to do their talents and uh, I think Mr. Zamir is about to become the world's most famous storyteller. Uh, and one of his aims is to do a story a day. Uh, Mullah Nasruddin and other, other uh, great speakers from the history of our planet. And uh, my friend is extremely gifted in telling stories. And I think when he starts to do that, all of you are gonna wanna watch him every day because uh, he's so good at this. And then next on the list was Mr. Shaq. Uh, I recently Facebook friended him. He'd been in the doghouse for a while. And uh, we just had a talk yesterday and he was sharing uh, the gamification. And oh, man, I forgot this guy's name. Uh, some originator has come up with uh, game designs and architectures that are the basis for so many things going on right now. And uh, he sent that to me and I started to inflow matrix it. And this is gonna be used for Planetary Guardians media game. And uh, Shack Attack is like, Casper, he's got this massive beard. He's always got these shiny eyes. It's like probably the most irritatingly positive person that I've ever met. And he's again, you know, within that Danji strain, extremely talented musically and uh, vocally and uh, in all manners and forms. He's a little bit younger, so he probably hasn't come right into finding exactly what he wants to do. But he's, uh, holy cow. Like he's, he runs circles around me in terms of understanding and clarity and the ability to uh, uh, deal with masses of people in a good way. Uh, one day you shall see him in whatever form he takes. And uh, very impressive young man. Next on the list is Miss Plum. Now, Miss Plum is used to being at the top of the list and I always place her the highest because she's a muse and uh, her presence just makes things better. Doesn't matter what happens if Miss Plum's around, uh, my life takes off, it feels good. And when she's she's disappeared, it just doesn't feel so good. And she's always lost in some romantic entanglement with somebody who doesn't value her to the extent that she she is. And uh, right now she's in the midst of this. And we, we have a show called The Love Proper where I film her and uh, find out about her latest entanglements. And then I attempt to give her some feedback. And of course she never takes it. And that's part of the humor of the show. And then I always try to bring in 9-11 and other conspiracy theories into the uh, videos. And we have quite a few videos up. I haven't really promoted the show much and neither is she. And this is true with most people that I'm doing a show with that we're all a little hesitant to actually go into the public. I'm, I'm not sure why, but I think it's probably the presence of me. And uh, so it sort of lowers my confidence a bit that I'm doing these shows with people who don't necessarily want to promote the show themselves. And since I'm doing so many shows, I, there's only so much I can do. I load it up, film the show, I load it, uh, not doing editing now, and then I promote it a little bit sometimes. But it would be nice if the people I'm doing the shows with, you know, if they're just doing one show and I'm doing 10, uh, it might be nice if they actually did some work towards uh, bringing the show into a, a greater audience. But that is something that uh, I guess is going to take its time. And uh, one day they may go, hey, man, you know, you guys aren't so bad. It's a good show. Caps, we made that bad, but you know, that's life. Next on the uh, report is Mr. William Graham Stewart, and he's over in Greece right now. And he's a, a game designer that has been playing with the game of now for years. And he's he's someone that is a like a brother to me because we seem to have the same attitude and philosophy around money and the same attitude and philosophy around sort of uh, waking people up and doing so in a, in a funny bit of a strange way and right now he's working on a new game he's just finished I think his first manuscript for it and it it could be the best idea I've almost ever heard 
it's funny. It's totally in alignment with spiritual progression. Uh, he's, he's got connections to these incredible people across the world. And, and I'm one of them. I'm just a little piece portal into planetary guardians. And he's got, I'm not going to say too much about the game right now, but uh, we have a lot of interactions right now and he's connecting me to people in his network and uh, I'm attempting to help him a bit, but just, we, we have daily chat, we have weekly chats and they, they go up into the very secret plan and he's a character and he's uh, all of you are characters. I mean, I'm essentially talking to just the people in the plan. I mean, there may be people who uh, watch this, who uh, know me or us and want to start to track what's going on. Because a lot of times I've spoken about this plan, this living story, but I don't really share much about all the goings on in the background because there's too many, there's too many things going on. And I usually overwhelm people. And, but now I'm seeing you know, there's so much to share. There's so many, uh, this is just a little tidbit of just me. And then there's all across the planet, you know, there's billions of people doing things. And, you know, hundreds of thousands of them are working on magnificent projects that uh, may or may not see the light of day. And we, we need to start to bring them together, organize them together, and show a new media, something that isn't this insane corporate media that's always giving the same feedback around the negative things and they lie so much and who gives a shit about those guys in my opinion you know we need a media that is showing the positive direction that our species is going that our country is going that our communities are going that our teams are going that our families are going that our organizations are going and our individuals and to promote that and to highlight the emergency situations and to be able to use our resources in a manner that fully supports the heroes doing the good work and the necessary problems on our in the planet and our world and our communities and you know such as like water in canada in first nations uh, reserves you know how the heck does that happen i mean they own everything and the, the government's been fleecing them for you know generations and they don't even have water and i mean and some of the responsibility i think is in the reserves and the nepotism of the families and the chiefs that sort of hoard all the money that seems to be a big problem so it's not necessarily just one side it's all sides but uh, these problems need to be addressed and that's what's going to be addressed by planetary guardians within the media game where specific issues are going to get media teams and coalitions of, of people that are there to actually address the problem at hand and not just kind of give media that every once in a while gives a two-minute download about what's occurring but is a media that gives the remedy that shows the problem, that brings the people together necessary to answer the problem and answers the problem over time. And that's part of using the info matrix and the shared knowledge community idea and the planetary guardians uh, to actually carry it out. So that's also big parts of the plan. Next on the report is Mr. Yogi Shambhu. And he and I have been doing a show called The Inside Scoop, where both of us uh, have talked, I think we're in episode number eight there, and both of us give a perspective on what is it happening. We're focusing on the COVID uh, pandemic or scamdemic and the 5G rollout, but we're also coming into, I guess, a deeper understanding of what it's like to be your own media, what it's like to want to affect and influence the people around you and how to do so in terms of a show where everyone and anyone right now could make a media like this and start to uh, address what you see and speak your truth and to do so with people that share your mindset or have an alternative viewpoint, but definitely want to change the world for the better. So Mr. Yogi Shambhu is, I think, an excellent speaker, excellent researcher. He's another excellent musician, another, you know, top level person, very well loved in his community. And I see him as the leader of Planetary Guardians for Victoria, which we are now uh, starting to talk about. And Again, any of these players that are in the very secret plan are going to be very high in the hierarchy of planetary guardians if they choose to want to be so. And uh, you get rewarded for your participation. I'll tell you that. I mean, I've been watching so many things for so long. And, uh, you know, I gauge, I gauge things of what is occurring and what isn't. I want to reward people who do well and uh, kick people off the ship who are doing nothing or uh, sort of hurting the plan. And... Uh, so next on the uh, report is Mr. Clint Carlton Sky. Now he's he's funny. 
it's funny because whenever we speak, it's great. And we have this incredible connection. But as soon as we're not speaking, it seems like he goes into his own world. And I'm not really part of that world. But we'll see about that. Uh, I asked if he wanted to get a group uh, to do some process with his soul network group because I missed the first call. And uh, he was in Telegram and I was in Facebook and I didn't realize that he was in Telegram. So I missed the first call. Sometimes that's bad if you get invited because I think half the people came to his group. And uh, so the people who don't show up, basically, you know, they get the punt, right? They're not really paying attention. So I was one of them. And, but I think it's a big thing for, for me to come aboard any ship and to do any type of process because uh, I'm there to find the truth. I'm there to assist the person who's doing it. And if there's anyone there who's a little on the fence or maybe unsure, you know, I may come across too strong because uh, I want to know, are you committed? I want to know, you know, who are these people? What do you need to do? And how can I, as a facilitator, help the group go forward in the limited time that I have. And so I have, again, many processes and many maps and uh, methodologies to do so. So if anyone's out there and they need help with their team and they want to boost, uh, that's something I specialize in. So Clint, he's, 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 he's grieving a, a dear friend uh, passed on in the very well known. And, you know, the sky has connections into other worlds and he's very connected into the first nations community and he's doing huge things like a lot of these people in the background are doing huge things and people may or may not know about it but he's he's one of the people who uh you know the world one day will <laughs> be amazed at, at his accomplishments and he's a very humble man and a very sincere man and uh, uh we'll see what happens there I won't say he's, he's just about to hear about some major project that is going to be you know, life-changing for him and for everyone around us. And uh, I hope that comes through. Now here, Mr. Kyle. Kyle has been uh, changed from inactive. Well, he was, a bit, he was dying for a while. It shift, shifted to inactive and now he's active and he, he looks to be perhaps the first Planetary Guardians field team that is on the road, that is making uh, media, that is uh, sort of connected to Captain Sweep and the secret plan. And the idea is to help people to find their ideal job. Their idea, the idea is to uh, create a new paradigm economic system where media people, planetary guardians, are creating a great lifestyle. And they're like Jedi Knights and they don't have to worry about money. They don't have to worry about their tools. They have all that stuff because there's a built-in business system. There's a the minimum wage is $100 per hour. And uh, I help people to find out how to do that. And I've got three teams right now that are doing it. And I think I have a max, maximum capacity of five, but maybe more, we'll see. And so Kyle is uh, back on the track, very hyped. And uh, it's exciting to see that this young Jedi Knight is uh, about to jump into uh, a very fun experience in a great sense of humor and i look forward to seeing what he comes up with the rev the rev is on the line he's on the line between active and inactive i gotta say that i was this close to giving the rev the toss yet again and i didn't and uh, we've done one show we're about to do the second show and he canceled kind of the last minute and i'm just sensing that he he's uh He's, he's a little wary of letting Captain Sweet back in his life. And uh, there's a good reason for that. I'm, I'm a little much. I, I tend to push the comfort zone and I, I'm, I'm, I want people to go towards the big vision and wherever they are, I'm like this. I want to go forward. And uh, some people have a very different pace and, and the Rev definitely has his own pace. And uh, sometimes I told him, I, I feel like I'm Sherlock Holmes and he's Dr. Dr. Watson. You know, he's one of my closest friends. And, uh, you know, he probably doesn't want to be the Dr. Watson, right? You know, he's, he's got his own gig and he's, he's a brilliant uh, healer. He does breath work with people. And he's on the Sunshine Coast where he's quite, you know, he's, he's got his nice niche. And he's, uh, he's, he, he, he helps people as kind of like an arts counselor very transformative. So if you know anyone who needs help, 
definitely uh, the, the Rev is, is one of the top people I know, uh, with Yogi Shambu and a few others for healing people and for being at the top of their class and being able to do so. Uh, but the Rev, what we're looking at is maybe the Rev building the time translator prototype. And so I have to, the next step with him is I have to get him plans for that. And uh, I see him as the Sunshine Coast Planting Guardians leader and base commander at Ruby Lake. And uh, this may not fit into the Rev's plans. I mean, the very secret plan is, is always sort of <laughs> a little bit more than most people are sort of ready for. So I can irritate people to quite a high degree by my enthusiasm and by my constant, um, hey, let's go there, let's go there. Um, I started a Conversations to Transform the World group with 12 people, thinking that this was going to be my start in online facilitation of groups where it's of service, I'm not charging, and I'm going to take people through conversations where they change the conversation type and learn how, as a facilitator and as a participant, to move from conversation type to conversation type. And it's not going as well as I thought. I thought they'd be excited that once they got in there, I set up a video to tell them what to do, and then set up a, a thread on uh, the how they're supposed to participate, and then one other thread of questions. And I think three people out of the 12 have done it. And this is almost like within a week. So I don't, uh, I don't know if I'll cancel the group. I think I'll give them a video and tell them kind of, uh, we need to do this. This is about participation. And uh, again, these are people that I know, people that uh, plan, some I, I don't know at all. And so this is a, a start of bringing these two things together. So I don't know how it's gonna turn out. I may put a deadline for participation, but I, I tend to be very enthusiastic and positive until I think things are not where they need to be. And then my irritation and frustration come in and then I turn into a little bit harder person and then I lose everybody because I've uh, broached their politeness uh, line in the sand and, and then my reputation goes down. There's another Vancouver 8 group that there, we had a group come to the house and uh, eight people got together and this was started uh, initiated by Harrison and I've been to two meetings. The second meeting, we did a, a divination reading with the eight people, and they are coming together because they want to do something about this pandemic, and they see what's happening in society, and they, they don't like it. Uh, there were a couple of people that said they couldn't even be, they were warned by their association that if they spoke, they'd lose their license. That's how bad it is. So uh, people are starting to rise up and want to organize and group, and this is a little team, and I'm... I'm not so sure about my participation level. I mean, I, I think from a point of view, if, if, if they allowed me to train them in the tools and we're doing media, uh, I would participate, but I'm tired of being in groups that don't know who I am, don't know what I can do, and, they just, and I'm just like some other person and we have to sort of plot along to get somewhere where I'm thinking, no, like, I mean, I've been doing this for a long time and I see where groups fall down and see where, they're not that successful, and it's usually in their communication. It's usually the things are so slow, and uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna. I can't go to it today, and uh, I gotta sort of ponder whether I want to participate because I'm running out of time, and my schedule is getting quite full, and uh, the things that ain't working are gone. The people that aren't working are gone, and uh, my attention needs to go where it needs to go. So there's three. Planetary Guardian um, teams. Planetary Guardian 1, Planetary Guardian 2, and Planetary Guardian 3. And actually, Planetary Guardian 4 has just, just been activated. Planetary Guardian 1 is uh, in Victoria, and they are in session 8, I think. So they've done two modules. And they are having pretty good success with the maps. And they are more of a sort of community Earth-based team. They want to create community and they're sort of like a family unit. So uh, we had an introduction of the synergy cards this week where they first came in contact with conversation types and the, uh, the clear conversation, the healing conversation, the grieving conversation, yeah. synchronization, synergization, grieving and conflict resolution. And the lights went off and 
they haven't come across this technology. And to me, I'm seeing, you know, I should have been teaching this 10, 15 years ago because I still had these cards then and I just, I, I've been in like in a reclusion mode and I've been sort of very frustrated with everything. And now that's over. And now that I'm teaching, I feel like a, a different person because I'm finally doing what I need to do with the work that I have. Uh, Planetary Guardian 2 is in Yorkton. And they're a team put together by Lori Renton, who has had the uh, some of the tools of the new Paradigm Toolkit. She run a business on a value system created over 10 years ago. She believes firmly in the system, but she hasn't had much training, and she's just coming back in. And uh, they have a learning center, and they are looking to be a distributor of the tools. They are getting trained in the tools, and they're looking to run the learning center using the inflow matrix of the operating system. So they may be one of the first places on the planet to use the inflow matrix as an operating system. So they shall, of course, get a lot of support, attention, and be pioneers. And Saskatchewan, you know, it's the first place where medical care came in. And it's, it's a great province, you know, filled with great people. And right now, everyone is going to need a new economic stimulation. And so that's what the inflow matrix and the new paradigm toolkit are to stimulate communities to really generate a lot of wealth for themselves because the true wealth is in the people, it's not in the commodities. And right now your knowledge as a community and what you specialize in and how you organize your artists and your originators is going to be the prime focus point for communities to generate the wealth they need for the people that are in them. And so that is pretty exciting. Uh, Planter Guardian 3 team activation just happened. A little bad news, one of them is dropping out and I'm very disappointed about that because uh, to me, the world needs planetary guardians and the world needs all of us to organize differently. And so you either participate or you, you don't. You either see at the value of this or you don't. And I brought together four different people that I know, all in my opinion, you know, all stars. And uh, to lose one off the team off the bat because they've changed their mind, you know, you gotta let people go. They, they got to do what they got to do, but I, I thought I thought I had uh, chose people that had interest in the long term, understanding what this is, and uh, I still I know I got to be detached. Now, getting lower in the list here, I mean, there's still very everyone is so important, so there's no rhyme or reason to the order except maybe Ram at the top, uh, but everyone else just sort of uh, comes out. And uh, Chinoa, who's a, a very high-end teacher who is uh, going through a bit of a transformation. And she's helping immensely uh, me in what I'm doing right now. But her own creative pursuits may be uh, interfered with by her having to uh, interact with little Captain Sweep and so that is something that she is, is looking at, but she's a, a brilliant researcher and she's been finding out what the, what's been going on behind the scenes of this uh, pandemic. And I look to her to be probably the most gifted, intelligent assessor of what's occurring. And she informs me a lot each day on, on the new things that she's learning. And I can tell that you know, she, she needs her own show for many different reasons, and she's a, a great teacher, but she hasn't quite stepped into that place of looking at that being her primary revenue stream. She's got her own business, and she's very successful in that. And uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, Miss Lara down in Duncan, commander for Duncan and Planetary Guardians, and uh, she looks at changing the spinning mini into combination of businesses and she wants to bring conscious communication into her business she wants to have a synergizer table there she wants to train facilitators she wants to sell the cards and she wants to she's very into the plan very into planetary guardians uh, knows the importance of it and she's a uh, another brilliant creator in her own right she pops out products on her own she's always creating and she's a hub of warmth and love to the people around her in duncan and uh I am going to go visit them at some point pretty soon. Sometime there's going to be a tour 
where me and a team of planetary guardians are going to be going to different places, setting teams up, doing teachings and trainings, and uh, having as much fun as possible. And so there's preparation happening for that. Now, Jordan and Samantha, uh, we have a show called The Apocalypse Committee, and it's uh, currently in about eight episodes. And Jordan is another originator who basically has this incredible series of ideas for media, new paradigm media, and uh, he has his own inner structures that he's been working on that is integrating with the inflow matrix. And I can't say enough about him in terms of his ability to speak and his ability to illuminate sort of where we're going and how to do so. And he's always teaching me each week uh, another piece of his plan. And he's, you'll see, He's an, another player in the very secret plan that uh, the world is going to uh, see at some point and, and see his brilliance. And Samantha is his partner, and she's doing big things online with teaching body semantics and uh, connecting to the feeling and dancing and leading larger and larger groups of people in Zoom online to experience higher levels of uh, excitement and love and uh, expression and so she's this feminine aspect with me and jordan that we have a threesome online uh, each week and it's another show called the apocalypse committee and we're looking at you know how our gifts interact we each give a sort of report like this each week about what we've been uh, going through what we're learning and uh again we're sort of in an, in an exploration place finding out you know what 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 do we want to do? What can we do? But each week uh, we're sharing. And again, it's, it's, I, I feel like every conversation I have with all the people that I'm interacting with is worthy of a show. I find that the interest, the depth, uh, their insight, their wisdom is you know, better than what I see online, much better than I see in the mainstream media. And uh, it's, it's, it's to show people what we're doing you know, that there are groups of conscious aware people that are working full time to generate solutions for the new paradigm, for the new world, that are very different from what you see in the mainstream media, and very different from what you see in the normal sort of movies and shows that are out there. And uh, we hope that you would like to watch this and participate in something that has higher meaning, has higher purpose. You know, we're on this planet to spiritually evolve we're on this planet to serve the mother earth we're on this planet to truly find out our highest potential in terms of creativity and uh, the passion we have for what we want to learn and uh, these things are to me what are important and these other things that are always being shoved down our throats are just negative interpretations set to keep you in fear so that they can control you and feed you stupid things so that we agree to them because we're so stunned by the idiocy of, of, of their worldview. So uh, there's another uh, woman, Lisa Belcher, that I have been doing a, a one-hour show with. I think we have 13 or 14 episodes. It's called uh, Shift the Narrative. She's an old friend from Calgary who's uh, gone through her own process of healing, and now she's about to come into the world with her work. And she's a very gifted, intuitive, she's a very uh, sexy, attractive woman who uh, is always dealing with men in a certain way. And, and she's very transparent about her activities and who she is. And so we have a chat each week and we go back and forth sharing whatever we're going through. And she, she really inspired me to get into a scheduled life and to change my, my basic uh, way of doing things by being the first person to uh, that I said I would meet weekly. I, I couldn't keep a scheduled meeting. I was so sort of presencing in the now and so presencing in the sort of larger timeless world where I was operating through strict synchronicity and to be in a scheduled life I, I had a very strong aversion to it, and now that's changed. And now I'm scheduled, but I'm, I'm producing at such a higher level 
than I was before. Before it was kind of research and testing, and now it's like implementation. And now I realize if I, if I say I'm going to be there, I got to be there. If I say I'm going to do something, I got to do it. And even though I'm, I'm, my workload is almost doubling each week, it seems, I seem to be able to do the processes to do the filming, load it to the net, and go on to the next thing and not leave things hidden on my computer that never get seen. And that was one of my all time worst patterns that I, I seem to have broken recently. Uh, Lori Renton, who I guess is in Planetary Guardian 2, I give another mention to her because she's so prominent in terms of the plan and she's run a financial services company in Saskatchewan. She's changed it into a, more helping people with money, but doing so from a personal development point of view. And she's another person who one day will be extremely well known by the whole species for what she's doing. And a very humble woman, very well loved in her, in her town. And uh, she gets it. She gets it. And she's waiting for the people around her to get it. And so I will be going out to Yorkton at some point this year, spending maybe a year there. I mean, not a year. No, never know. A month there. And uh, setting up a, an event that takes 144 people into the shared knowledge community idea and getting them going and then I sort of move on and they're left behind to do all the work right so uh, next oh I did uh, Terry Monroe has been a uh, queen in the waiting uh, she's been sort of uh, going through her own healing processes and it looks like we're about to start working together and she's another person who can hold her own show in a big way very loved woman in the community and uh, very passionate about protection of the animals and passionate about protection of the children and the trees and Mother Earth and a uh, huge hearted woman who has so much to share. And we're looking at how to create the container, uh, the structure for her business and her entrepreneurial activities because there are a lot of people out there who, you know, they're, they're great teachers and they have so much to share, but the business side of things is difficult. And uh, it's difficult because of the way the old paradigm was structured. So we're looking at helping people with that. Uh, this is pretty long, isn't it? Okay. Then uh, Keisha Walker down in the United States. She is one of the uh, smartest women that I see on the net. And she's posting the most intelligent memes and videos. And she keeps me informed on what is occurring in terms of the status kind of mindset of how these governments get away with what they do. And we had our first interview and it was her first interview. And it was just, you know, an honor to interview someone who to me is a hero, somebody who has the courage to speak the truth and uh, isn't willing to give in to these constant oppression. And she's, she's a lighthouse that is sending these messages out. And she's been teaching me a lot online about, uh, you know, the depth of the, uh, oppressive cabal and what they do to us and so there's this constant you know, the analysis of the fear-based old based paradigm and then the focus on the, the new paradigm remedies and, uh, Carl Kalman had an interview with him Carl Kalman is one of the world experts on the Mayan calendar and he is pointing towards September of next year. This is pretty important, uh, being the low point, that we are now going into a low point. It's gonna get worse and worse and worse until September of next year, and then it's gonna to start to get better. So if you're wondering what's coming up and you're wondering what to do, you know, stock up on food. If you know, have at least three months supply of food, have a supply of water, have uh, all the emergency materials you have. If you have money in the bank, lots of it or whatever, I would, use it to buy resources make sure like if you have two years of food i would definitely get two years of food there's three days of food supply for the big cities and uh, as you see they can shut things down overnight and uh, things will never be the same and so right now we have the chance to stock up make food caches have getaway plans all those sorts of things and i think that that's a good idea to start to have that kind of mindset as you see this world it's going to disintegrate more and more and more until at some point it's going to get better but it's a good idea to prepare and to communicate with your family and your loved ones and your allies differently. You know, start to meet, start to connect, see who, you know, to get through this is going to be a team and community-based uh, 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 enterprise. And so that's why I have focused on what I have focused on. 
Um, Gino. Gino is a new player who's come in through William, and he has a, a large networks of people that he's uh, starting to introduce me to. We had a bit of a run in <laughs> at the beginning, and uh, William and I speak about him quite a lot in our in our show, which Gino may or may not know. And uh, it's funny, you know, it's funny to bring in all of these high caliber people and to see how they treat you, to see how they assess you. You know, do they know the value of your work? Do they know what you've done? A lot of people, they come in, they taste a little, they, they take a look, and then they have this sort of impression of you. And they don't take the time to find out who you are. And one of the things I'm doing with people is if I'm coming in contact with anyone these days, I'm taking the time to find out their current contacts. I'm taking the time to find out who they are because then I can communicate with them in a certain way. And I found there was a, another woman that I did a bit of a download to. I was in this uh, synergy, another synergy conversation where I've been with uh, Gino and some others in this weekly group, a mastermind group. And I'm, it could be the place that I start to bring my work into the world. I haven't really started to teach the big picture work that I have so people can start to understand exactly what I've done. And I'm waiting for other people to invite me. I, I, I'm not into this, I gotta go out and flag my work. Nah, I've done the work, I have the value. I'll see what people come to me because I'm already sort of over booked as it is. Uh, you know, I'll take it as it come. If you wanna initiate uh, something, if you have an idea, business idea, you want support, whatever it is, I'm willing to listen. And right now you can get to me. But as this proceeds, it's gonna be harder and harder to get to me because I just won't have the time and I've got 100,000 people trying to talk to me. And uh, right now, you know, I'm not that well known. <coughs> and I like it that way. Uh, but one day, I'm gonna be really well known. And uh, I have to deal with that because like anyone, you know, it's, it's a totally different world when everybody knows you. Uh, in some ways it's good in other ways it's, it can be horrible right so uh, Attila he was uh, on board for a little while I gave a test uh, he didn't uh, do well on the test and uh, he got the boot and uh, just so anyone knows that uh, participation is rewarded but if you're not working if you're not doing anything uh, I'm not going to be in connection. You'll go inactive or dying or dead. Uh, there's potential, probationary, active, inactive, dying, and dead. Those are the six relationship states. And so we are at various stages with one another. And you can start out in your potential, and then you start to interact with someone, and now you're probationary for about nine months. And uh, each can give each other tests to find out who they are because we don't really know who we are. We don't know if we should be connecting and we don't know if our lives are relevant. And so to do so, you have to test, check out and see. And I find a lot of these younger men and women, uh, they don't have a clue. They don't have a clue about uh, many things and they think they do. And, uh, Everyone learns in a different way. And most people learn uh, a little differently when they're tossed off the ship, when they don't uh, keep up to the standards of Captain Sweep. And I know that may not be nice, but uh, I don't particularly care. Oh, also, Diana, I, I, I put offers out there more through synchronicity about what is going on. And I would like, again, I want everyone to be participating to some degree. And uh, if I put an offer out now, if I send a message and the person does not respond, then they're pretty much gonna get the punt. Uh, no matter how much I love you, no matter how much I respect you, I'm only going to be interacting with people that communicate and are interested in what I'm doing. And uh, at some point, everyone will know that. They'll know that ahead of time, meaning be careful. You know, you just can't sit and watch from the distance. If you're gonna be around me, we're gonna be connecting and communicating and acting towards this plan or uh, you're going to be doing whatever you want to do, but it ain't going to be with me. It ain't going to be connected to what I'm doing. And so I have lots of different ways to help people. I can uh, connect you to a network. I can give you tools. I can give you training. Some of it I'll charge. A lot of things I don't. And if you are making progress in the future, uh, you know, I'm all behind you. There's, oh, I forgot. There's Noah. 
change the color of that though. Noah is working on the Infomatrix software program. We're currently working on a, a program for chat rooms and he is working right now for no funds. Uh, based upon knowing he will be rewarded when we do get first funding, but he's uh, driving a truck during the day and at night he, he does a little bit on this and uh, he's made quite good progress and he's a master programmer and I love his soul. And again, if anyone is doing anything from the good of their heart, that's where you build up the big kudos with me. You know, if you, the only reason or way that you're going to do something is just because of the money, uh, that's different then because uh, so many of us have done things not because of the money, but because of our love of Mother Earth. And those are the people to me that need to be rewarded first and get the best stuff because they're the ones who put the time in and took the risk and are actually coming at it from a very good place rather than just show me the money because that's the rest of the world. You know, it's just, I'm not going to do anything unless you pay me. And that's the problem with the old paradigm. It's like, it's, it's all transaction based and value and money are equated with one another when they're not. So that whole system to me is just fricked. And uh, we need to base a new system on real value and compensation for real work and to help each other out to achieve the lifestyle that we want and uh, not live in these little silos and compete with one another and sort of uh, have a fear-based scarcity mentality. We need abundance, there's tons of stuff. You can, get a map and this map is, is worth, could be millions. I can print hundreds of thousands of these and sell them for a certain amount. And it's just one of hundreds of maps that I got. And uh, each map builds the info matrix. Each map helps you to create your own job, your own organization, your own shared knowledge community. And together they form this new paradigm economic system. And so the plan is not based upon it. Maybe the plan is not based upon, I hope so. The plan is based upon design and deep commitment on the people in it to participate in the larger transformation of our species. And uh, if I missed anybody, I apologize. There are certain people that are coming in that are new that I don't really want to <laughs> mention yet. And uh, each person who comes in, I try to investigate to find out who they are and uh, where they are in their life and what they want, where they want to go. And then I can understand how I can interact with them and either help them or not. And so this report is quite long. I don't know if anyone is going to watch it, but again, if you were mentioned in here, yeah, and you're either going to like what I say or you don't, but I just want you to know that there's a lot happening and it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and we need people to participate in it. And the idea is you design your ideal job within this new paradigm economic structure, and then I'm here to assist you to find out how to do that. And uh, I do need a bit of help and support to do so. So if anyone wants to chip in a bit for old Captain Sweep, uh, that would be greatly, uh, <laughs> greatly appreciated. I feel like I'm doing very good work I haven't set up my Patreon and all these things, but uh, and I don't really ask much from from people, but I sure do like it when I get a little bit of help along the way because I, I feel I've earned it and uh, I'm giving a lot and I find my uh, community is, is seemingly indifferent to what I'm doing and I'm a little, a little tired about that, but I know you shouldn't end with a complaint or an insult, but... What are you going to do? Hey? Anyway, this has been the week of, uh, what is this week? Uh, who knows what week this is? This is that. Let me just check. This was the week of uh, May 18th to the 24th. May 17th to the 23rd, 2020. This is the first report by Captain Sweep. And again, for posterity reasons, if anyone watches this after I die, uh, you can see that, yes, there was things happening in the very secret plan. It wasn't just delusions of grandeur. It wasn't just my imagination. Uh, we are going to transform our species into a loving species. Okay? <laughs>